Hello, everyone. Happy May 4th. May the 4th be with you. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox Live. Super excited today. This is a rather special episode as we are going to be doing a deep dive into the new and improved VS for Mac, which just had its release candidate come out last week. And joining us to talk about that is Jordan Mathiason from the VS for Mac team. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Leslie. How's it going? Hi, everybody. Excited that's to be cool. here. Great. Yeah, happy to have you. So VS for Mac, I mean, that's been around for a bit to my recollection. I thought it was already around. So what is this new revamp that appears to be going down with it lately? Yeah, so Visual Studio for Mac is actually about to celebrate five years of being around as a product at Microsoft. And uh, this release is our third major new version since the uh, product first came out. And the real big focus this time around was on uh, making a fast and fluid IDE with support for .NET 6 uh, development. And that's like hand tailored for Mac dev. So to really embrace kind of this native Mac OS look and feel. Um, it was kind of the really big headlines there, but we can dive into a number of different things we've been working on in the release. Sweet. So before we dive in, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be on VS for Mac? Yeah, so I've been a developer. Well, I've been in the developer world since 1990 something, <clears throat> 1998, um, working with .NET since it first came out, in even early previews back in the earlier 2000s, and um, built my career as a developer on .NET development basically. And then 10 years ago, now joined up at Microsoft, wanted to try out the world of program management and get into. I think it was a dream job for me to get into like. The IDE, I always thought editor work was so interesting and what, you know, the, the developer tooling space. And so I got my chance 10 years ago and joined up in the team and worked through a number of things like JavaScript tooling and then landed on Visual Studio for Mac five years ago. Got really excited as a longtime Mac user as well. It's where I learned to originally program. HyperCard was my first programming environment and language back on the Mac in the 80s or early 90s. And so kind of tied my home passion of tech with the Mac up with my work at Microsoft and .NET joined up the team. That's awesome. Actually, um, VS for, or not VS for Mac, but I had a Mac in college, which is when I learned how to code. So um, yep, Mac land was my introduction to coding as well. So it's cool to see maybe how development can be improved in the Mac space with VS for Mac. Awesome. Sweet. So shall we talk more about it? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Cool. So I can actually real quick, this is uh, we'll share a link in to our blog post that talks about all the details of the release. I'll generally give everybody an overview. Um, and like we were saying before we started up here, uh, Leslie, I think even just make it general I'll optimize for discussion with folks. So I see if you at least one question already came in. If other people have some as you go along, I'd love to focus on answering questions and spend time in demo and just talk a bit about things around the IDE. So feel free to chime in with your questions around here if you've been using the product already as well. Yep, ask away. So I mentioned a big thing with the release around uh, being hand tailored for the Mac. This is a whole new UI for the IDE. We've moved to fully native Mac OS UI, whereas before the IDE was a combination of UI toolkits. And the real motivation for this was around making, uh, addressing some long standing UI glitches and performance issues of the IDE. So that was our first step toward fast and fluid a really embracing or the Mac native UI look and feel. This also did things like enable um, a nice new dark mode for us, as well as true full screen support, accessibility tooling across Mac OS, uh, being able to work with the IDE. The uh, other big change in the release for fast and fluid is we also swapped out the back end and we actually run on .NET 6 now. And so the IDE itself is a fully managed IDE um, working through the technology that came from Xamarin to be able to let you call the native Mac OS APIs through managed code. So we're running now on top of .NET 6, which also then brought with us native support for Apple's M1 ARM64 processor. So that was another big step where for, uh, we're getting reports from many users of really noticing these perf improvements running on Apple's M1 hardware in our own testing and trials. Uh, we've had a number of large projects that open like half the time now uh, on these M1 devices. So those were two really, really big things in the release, making it a foundational kind of a release. We really heavily focused on those architectural changes that we really needed to make. And so like, here's an example here as I was talking of the load times. And 
Um, on the left, you see the new uh, version 2022. And on the right, you see 2019 is what's currently out in production um, as our stable release. And now 2022 has already opened up a project. 2019 is still taking a while. And you'll see the code start to load up and you'll be able to actually start writing code in just a moment here. And there we go. <laughs> so that kind of is a nice visual of this uh, game. That's on an M1 device that those uh, videos are from. That's awesome. Performance improvements are always a hit. <laughs> <laughs> In my experience, so, yep, I love seeing the side by sides. Thanks. That was so, a cool video to pull together too. Yeah. Oh, we got a question on performance. Speaking of which, is it faster? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is, so yeah, is VS for Mac faster than VS for Windows or Linux? Um, we don't. There, there may be some cases. I don't know that it's faster than VS on Windows, but I haven't done a direct comparison to see there. So that's a good question. I know we focused mostly on how we could get the gains out of, you know, the, the product running on the Mac versus our previous release. I don't have anything more that, as far as comparison on Windows. We look at that a little bit, but I don't have anything off the top of my head that really stands out. Gotcha. Cool. So what would you say were some of the other um, customer pain points that people talked about between Visual Studio for Mac 2019? And how did you try to address them in the new version? Aside from performance, of course. <laughs> yeah. there. Um, so a big one around .NET 6 and supporting that we've had the previews going on so vs for mac uh notably we did not release at the same time as visual studio 2022 back in november with the changes to run on dotnet 6 itself the amount of work ahead of us with our native ui we actually have taken a, a bit more time to bake to this point um so dotnet 6 has been a big request lately as all the way through the preview releases so that was a big area of focus we've been supporting the previews as they came out in dotnet 6 and supporting that since uh, .NET 6 what was released. Uh, another big area of focus for us, we're always working to continue some of the, bringing some of the productivity tooling from Visual Studio on Windows into VS for Mac. And there's a big list. They're not a one-to-one -one comparison of the two IDE. So uh, we're guided fully on feedback around these. And one of the big areas was our Git experience specifically for handling Git commit and Git changes. So that was one area that um, had a good, um, bunch of changes around a whole new Git commit experience. And I can show you that in just a moment here, as well as uh, really it was, it was those fundamental things, a big feedback there. I mentioned some glitching. There's a big high voted issue on our developer community of people trying to drag tabs around in the current release and the screen can lock up with this blue <laughs> background. That was a side effect to some of the, that was one of these really high visibility kind of glitches we've mentioned. There's uh, been a number of reports over the years on VS for Mac around different UI glitches that we were limited with our approach to the um, the framework we were using, it had a whole separate um, kind of main event loop going on, handled rendering of the stuff itself instead of letting macOS just handle rendering the UI. Those things all added up to a lot of different paper cuts and nasty UI experiences that drove us to make that change beyond just raw performance. Awesome. Great, so I would love to see more in, about really the impact that .NET, that running this on .NET 6 has had on the overall experience in terms of modernizing it and making developers more productive. Yeah, let me show you some of the, I'm giving spoilers of some things we could look at here, but let me show a little bit of the IDE. Um, for those that aren't familiar, actually, let me just start in with good old, uh, the very first screen once you launch the IDE, which is our getting started screen. and. Um, if you were to come into here and look at creating new projects, this is always a great way to see what the IDE supports. So uh, with 2022, we'll have full support for .NET 6, like web and console applications. You'll now be able to come in and um, .NET 6 will be used by default. You know, if you create a console app, like so many of us do, to just play around with some one-off ideas or start working on that next great um, website or web application of yours, then you have your ASP.NET Core support in here, complete with uh, Blazor and Blazor WebAssembly support. The IDE also has some unit test tooling. Uh, this is a little spoiler for .NET MAUI, but work is not going to be in for MAUI in the 17.0 release, this first um, release of 2022, but it's coming soon. You can kind of see a little tease there. 
But Xamarin support is in the IDE to create mobile apps. Sorry, what was that, Leslie? I was just gonna say Maui's gonna be big <laughs> when that. Yeah, that I'm excited big. a lot on that. Yeah. Yep, a lot of this is work. early. Uh, this is an early build here. I've got some stuff, so don't take it all as like final UI on as far as those templates go and such. But uh, rounding it out, iOS and Android development with Xamarin, and then you could do uh, some cloud development with Azure Functions. This really brings Azure Functions v4, which enables you to run the functions on .NET 6 themselves upon Azure. So those are a few items and of rounding out what the IDE can do. I had Even TVOS, I like, I like that. I what was that? The TVOS section in the project uh, was, I love Oh yeah. So many options. And I think what's cool about all of that, I mean, just looking at the project selection window, it is very similar now to VS for Windows project selection in the in a lot of ways and that there's a lot more options for the kinds of projects that you can create, which which is cool. So is that kind of one of the, the goals to create more of a parity between the VS for Mac experience and the VS for Windows experience? Yeah, definitely. We want to get it, make it easier to be able to switch between the two. Some people like to use uh, the you know Mac at home like I do myself uh, even for as a long time Windows and .NET dev I like to go home at night and, you know maybe play around on my Mac a bit so being able to float between the environments or you may be working in an enterprise or at a company where you need to be able to work on both operating systems we want to make it easier to flow between them and so um, there's enough of a gap between the IDE still but definitely a goal forward uh, for us is feeling more like a like Visual Studio, making it easier to get around the IDE. So that that came down in this release also to uh, the level of detail of like our menu name. So we actually aligned like 80% of the menus in the IDE to match up with what you're used to on Windows. So a nice example was people saying that we didn't have the quick watch feature for debugging. Turned out we did, but it was something that was called expression evaluator before. So when you're debugging your app now, it'll use the same name you're used to on Windows. And that's the same as a a number of these menu items here for being able to find your way around the IDE. Uh, that's kind of one another example, of like one little step we made in that direction. Awesome. Yeah, I like the, having yeah, that. Launched, uh... As somebody who has a personal MacBook and um, a Windows machine at work, it's uh, yeah. to, <laughs> to not have to like uh, turn off one side of your brain that's responsible for the Mac usage in order to turn on the other one for Windows. <laughs> So, yep, and that was a pretty good, that's a, we've done so much over the past year or so on the release, I kind of take for granted some of those changes on the menus, but that was, that's always been a common, um, a common point. And we still hear it, uh, obviously, on, you know, this differences between the IDEs, but being able to more easily jump into one or the other was kind of common feedback we'd heard and the roots of the product to go back to Xamarin Studio from Xamarin when it came in. And so that's where some of our differences came over time. So we've been working on swapping out the editor and now the whole front end of the UI and replacing menu names. And um, so we've come a long way from those initial steps where it feels more like Visual Studio and we're starting to layer in even more. Uh, oh, even more of kind of the most demanded productivity tooling, if you will, into the IDE. Mm -hmm. I was, I'll touch on this real quick because it might seem weird to have a video game screen in front of me, but I wanted to show the... Uh, the other bit of in integration is with Unity. If you were to open up your uh, scripts with a Unity application, which can be written in C Sharp, then Visual Studio for Mac can uh, be used as an editor for those. So I could come in here and it'll open up this um, script file for my Unity application. And now I could come in and I could choose to attach to Unity and debug this code while running the game, uh, all from within the IDE, or I can even have uh, some features like adding Unity event functions. If I wanted to, I could come in and there's this UI that's been in. This is this is in Visual Studio for Mac in 2019 today. But just to give you a little feel for kind of rounding out the different workloads we support, there's Unity game development as well. Great. There's something for everybody. Close those out because the app I was working with here was also got a bunch of services running in Docker, so I don't want to leave too many things running or we might start to have a problem. So let's go back to here. Okay. So let me launch into, I'm going to open up this. This is one of my favorite .NET um, 
it's, sample apps right I now. Pod, .net podcast app. I'm like somebody put a lot of time and effort into this <laughs> as a demo. Yeah. Way. Like I used it for the first time last week. I'm like, this is so involved. <laughs> Very impressed. Yeah, there's a lot of detail. Uh -huh. So this, this one, if folks aren't familiar with it, uh, we could probably share a link to it as well. I forgot to grab that, but uh, there's a server side to the podcast solution, and then there's this website that I'm working on. On the server side, that lets you work with all these backing uh, services that are running locally for me right now within Docker. And uh, that's like the back end of the app. This lets you work on a, a website for podcasts where you can go ahead and subscribe and unsubscribe from podcasts to kind of browse ones you want to follow about .NET development. And uh, the sample application ties in all the way with ASP.NET Core sample app using Blazor to um, mobile apps with Maui. So it's a nice all around sample complete with good practices for the UI, like responsive design here on the website. So for me here, I was playing around with it and uh, playing around with the podcast functionality. And if we came in here and picked out a podcast, go with the .NET Maui podcast. I was uh, specifically looking back there in the ID at the subscribe unsubscribe functionality. So uh, here, if I can subscribe to this podcast and if I click unsubscribe, now we'll jump back to the IS for Mac in debug mode. So one of those really important features for all of us writing code. This uh, I use this as the starting point to show you the new UI for the ID since it's so important and have so much going on here. So this is uh, VS for Mac 2022. When you come into the IDE now, if you've used 2019 before, you might notice right away changes in our tabs and how they look. Our uh, dark theme is darker. Um, little differences that probably won't come across in the stream, but down to the level of me resizing this is a very smooth experience, whereas before it could be a bit jumpy with the UI. These are little things that add up to that take up you know, little paper cuts that added up to a lot of discomfort with the ID before perhaps now we're able to address those just by moving on to native UI I mentioned light uh dark mode but this is always a really nice I mean people have seen me talk VS Mac before I've, I've shown this one because I always like to just switch real quick and then you can see the light yeah. light theme switch to dark before you have to restart the IDE it gives a Kind of a nice simple example of a change in the UI. Mm -hmm. I can use uh, auto and let macOS just guide me. And so macOS has a feature later in the day, it could switch to dark mode earlier in the day to light. And now the IDE could move along with that. OS oh, feature. great. Yeah, I love that feature. And um, because I think VS for Windows has that too, but I, I like being able to change to paint on the time. time yeah, time. and I enjoy the little, the little touches in macOS, like the uh, desktop images changing color along with that theme throughout the day. I have fun with those. I think uh, the dark side is very fitting for today, though. Not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's see. Um, actually, there's not as much interesting to debug here, but say if I'm working on the code, I can bring up an example of a feature we've brought back, which is the ability to preview these quick actions. So if you're not familiar in Visual Studio, when you're editing a line of code, you can see these little icons pop up on the side. and uh, for example, that one there, this shows up as a suggestion. Um, you see this kind of screwdriver icon, and that means there's a change you could make to your code. And so it shares these analyzers from Roslyn uh, to give suggestions on how you could improve your code. And so now we've got the preview window here has come back in the IDE um, as part of work to redo this menu, partially to make it more accessible, but also to um, kind of clean up the way the preview functionality was working for us before. Or if we were to be writing this code, and let's say I'd switched to var, now you'll see this other icon, which is the light bulb. And these are the strongly recommended changes that the IDE can recommend. So here in this case, um, that's where I had this suggestion to you know, use mm -hmm. an explicit type instead of var. So I chose that, and it shows us the where I had the code. But let's say I hadn't seen that before or hadn't spoiled my demo by already using it before the demo was running then uh, you use the light bulb to switch back and forth and see that new preview feature. Sweet. Let's so say... was, that ability oh, to preview, oh, was that ability to preview not present in 2019? Yeah, the short version was we uh, had some 
technical challenges and had to pull out the way we did the preview window in a few releases ago. It used to be in 2019, and then we had to pull that back out. And we're working on this new experience that ended up landing in 2022 that um, also enables it to be accessible to like the Mac OS accessibility tooling. The prior solution couldn't even really give you a good idea of it, what the preview window showed. So that was sort of the, tied the two together and we're able to bring it back. Gotcha. And this too would let you take a change and uh, let's say it could apply to multiple spots in the current file. There's a menu that can show up and let you change all the occurrences in this file, stuff like that in this window mm -hmm. that comes in. Something about this that I actually do like, I don't think Windows has this, is the ability to filter. So I'm assuming- Oh, good point. Places. Yeah, tell me more. Yeah, if you had a, I don't know if I have a long list. Yeah, I'd say I had a longer oh, list. Yeah. Um, we're playing around in another iteration for these configure and suppress options, but this gives us an example of a long list. And let's say I just, I'm on my keyboard and I just want to hit option enter to bring up the menu. And I know I want to introduce a local, I can now, stay rooted to my keyboard arrow down, select the change. Or uh, if you have the setting enabled in Mac OS to let you tap your controls, you could also come in and tab down and choose where you want to apply this change and then be able to click apply or hit enter and accept the change all without having to leave the keyboard. Nice. So yeah, that was kind of playing around with that filter idea because that's, yeah, you're right. That's not in VS on Windows right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's a bit more niche to have like all those different possible changes or suggestions, but yeah, when the situation arises, it can be nice to have something like that. Uh, let's see, one other thing here, I teased up the get changes window. So let's say I made this change and I've uh, tested it out and feel happy about it. Now I can come over here to the get changes window. And this is similar to the feature in Visual Studio on Windows where you can take and uh, review the changes you've made locally, be able to compare them, see what you've modified, and then stage it to be able to commit. In this case, I was doing some little test edit, it looks like. And all from within this window, I can go ahead and see in one spot the changes I've made to my code, work out my commit. Oops. I'll look into that afterward and see what's up in this build on that. Mm -hmm. But get the idea. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> Uh, staging the change and I could type up a commit message and go ahead and commit all from within this dialog. Uh, let's say also just to show off another feature from Windows, we brought in the ability to move and drag and drop these windows, the tool windows around and have these visual cues. So let's say while I'm working with get changes, I wanted a little more real estate uh, for something or wanted to move it over to the other side of the IDE. I can now do that and move these around. It's another example of a kind of that to your, to your point earlier about getting closer to feeling more like Visual Studio and make it comfortable to work with and move between the IDs. Cool. And <laughs> on that subject of version control, <laughs> ironically enough, we were talking about this pre-show. Yeah. Does this work with TFS or uh, Team Foundation? Always a good question. Yeah. So if you work with um, Team Foundation server or Azure DevOps server, um, as long as your repo is using the Git version control through uh, through there, you're able to connect to it and work with Git. A few years back, we experimented with adding TFVC or Team Foundation version control support. And um, we had a preview of something that some people may remember that was an extension that added some support, but we had so many issues in it and challenges with, you know, long story short, all the TFVC code was coming from over on Visual Studio on Windows and worked on, um, APIs and things running on .NET and .NET, not .NET Core at the time, and a number of issues where it added up to just a, an experience we ended up not continuing with. And at this point in time, the Git version controls where we're focusing on putting all of our energy and improving that experience and cleaning up the way we do version control in the IDE. So slightly longer answer than no, we don't have any TFVC support, but if you use Git on top of say Azure DevOps or Azure DevOps server, that'll work. Gotcha. Might there be plans to implement that support in the future? None for TFVC at this point, no. Gotcha. Let's see what else. There's a few other questions that came in. I'm just looking real quick at the list to see if there's any. Well, yeah, there's one asking any plans for Linux, but <laughs> I think that's outside. Yeah, nothing I have on that front. Yep. I'm the Windows person. You're the Mac person. I honestly don't have the Intel on the Linux situation. Yep. 
There was another I saw about the... Oh, oh good timing. So uh, Roberto native just asked a question on Native Arm. Somebody else, Lazy Panda, before we started, asked a question about the installer still requiring Rosetta. So I can tackle both of these. Um, short version for everybody, even if you're new to the Mac. Um, Apple made the switch over to from Intel-based processors toward their own Apple Silicon, or Apple M1 was the first iteration of the Apple Silicon uh, ARM64 processor. And so with this release, we introduced native support of ARM64 for VS for Mac. So we're running on .NET 6. If you're running on an M1 device, the ID will now run in ARM, uh, under ARM64, and it won't require any emulation, which um, Apple's emulation technology has long been called Rosetta. Whenever they make platform architecture changes, they'll use Rosetta. So Rosetta 2 is the version that currently lets you run Intel-based uh, binaries on top of uh, the uh, ARM64 processor. So the IDE does not require Rosetta. It runs natively on ARM64 if you're on one of those devices. Uh, our installer right now still will go through Rosetta to run, and we're working on that for uh, an upcoming preview release. It was one of those that the first goal was getting the IDE there, but there's some really good reasons too um, that people want to get off of Rosetta, especially for the performance gains on the IDE. So we're moving the installer, it's just not there quite yet. What's Rosetta for those of us who may not know? Yeah, so Rosetta is Apple's uh, kind of like translation layer to be able to run those x64 binaries on the, in this case, the ARM64 processor. So Rosetta 2 is the current iteration. Um, so when you go through Rosetta, it's letting it do that emulation and be able to run the other format on top of the ARM64. Awesome. Well, let's see. Other... Real quick, so we talked about Git changes and the overall new UI. There's, as far as some other new features, um, another one is the support for a subword navigation. So I don't know if folks of all, some of you may not have seen this over on Visual Studio on Windows, but historically, I'm going to hold down my shift key here and just use my keyboard and option shift. Actually, let's quit this little app I'm using so that doesn't throw off my demo. So here, if I hold the option key on Windows, this would be like the control key. It's letting me jump through a whole word at a time. Mm -hmm. Or let's go down here where you don't have the highlights. So you can see I'm selecting one whole word at a time. Now, if I hold down um, control and option, I can actually jump through subwords. So now I can select through parts of this. So I could move through here and be able to select portions of this name. So this can sometimes be called like camel hump navigation or the feature in the IDE is subword navigation. So this makes it possible to select portions of words when you're using like the camel casing sort of syntax. So that's in VS for Mac now as an option. I love this. Um, wasn't it also an intern project originally? That might have been. I don't remember on that because <laughs> I feel like that was for us, we just kind of lit this up from we're running on the same base core editor as Windows. So some things we sort of got in with a little bit of work to tie it into preferences and on it goes for our end. Yeah, because um, when Dante Gagne was on my show, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or maybe even before that, I remember him demoing that because it was new at the time. And uh, I feel like it was an intern project. So awesome. Yeah, intern, whoever, <laughs> if you were the person out there who created that, kudos, because I think that is a really nifty feature for camel casers like myself. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see, other things real quick. That's kind of an example of the small ones. There's just lots of little fixes across the ID as we move to native UI, so. It really is uh, the little things. Yeah. You'll get down to, so, you know, if, if you peek further into an effort like this just for fun on moving an I, the IDE's uh, UI around, we had to think of every aspect of the ID. So this gave us a chance to touch on things that Sometimes you don't go and modify much, like preferences are one of those experiences, you know, works well for people. You don't have to go in there a whole lot after initially setting it up. Um, in our case, we had to move our entire preference UI to native because this is one area that in the prior version of the ID was completely on um, this, I think GTK might've been the technology we were using for showing the UI and it didn't quite feel like, a, it didn't feel like a Mac app, quite right, little differences and drop downs and so, we had to revisit this whole preferences 
experience. So when you come in, um, just we changed up the order of things a little bit, but largely in this first step, brought forward the features from the prior release of VS for Mac. And over the time, this will be another area where we start looking at, you know, like when do you choose the best time to switch out for everybody preferences and names to maybe match more with Windows? And we had to walk a line of making it really hard for existing users to find your way versus new users to come in and balance what you know about from Visual Studio, like on Windows. So it's got a little bit of a merge of some ideas to start making it easier. Um, but this would be one area here that um, you could look at and preview features have been around for a while, but keep an eye here for some things we're experimenting with. Um, first chance exceptions. Uh, there's some something we needed in the team that was added in here and this thing that's called a snap control in the tool window that Ian and our team was playing with. Um, it's early right now, but the idea is you could have this menu to be able to change up how you dock your UI and not have to just drag windows around to locate them on the screen. So this can be really nice for people with some fine motor control challenges. Um, I believe, I, don't even, I believe we're designing this so that it could also be navigated by keyboard. Um, so people could move around windows if you also don't want to be able to, to use a mouse. So that's an early thing. Um, we got some more work to do on that one. And that's an example of some of the stuff you can find in the preview features that uh, give a little insight into some things we're working on for the future. Let's go ahead and bring back that solution window that I just closed. And for those of you that have been used to it over on VS on Windows, let's also throw it right here because it just feels right if you're used to having your window there. There we go. Well, as someone who's left-handed, I actually don't mind seeing the uh, essentially Solution Explorer on the left side of the screen. Nice. Like the only reason why I keep it on the right side is because I do so many demos and people get weirded out when I <laughs> put it on the left side. So it's like, fine, I'll put up with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was, was a long time VS user. I mean, my uh, usual spot is to be, was usually like this anyway, sticking back to the old. It used to be on the left in Visual Studio and oh, really? ways back. Yeah, it was on the left side and you used to always have this window down here also open. And this was, this was comfortable layout for me for quite a while out of just habit from like Visual Studio. I don't know if 2010 is the right version or, yeah, 2020, they were 2010, 2008, you know, a long time as the property solution window combo here, and then maybe a uh, testing tools open on the right side. And so I stick with some of those on the Mac. Fun fact, we, we, uh, we keep it on the left by default because on Mac OS, that's just also where Apple puts the, uh, well, I won't open up my uh, finder window, but it's where Ma Apple puts the sidebar for all of its applications and default Mac experiences. So we opted toward a Native Mac app feels a little more accurate if it, the window's on the left, but you can go ahead and drag it and move it around if you want. Sure. I do appreciate the lefty friendliness <laughs> in Apple land sometimes, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a, um, yeah, an elephant in the room style question. Don't know if you can answer this or not, but what's the timetable for general availability? because we're still kind of in preview release mode, right? Right, so you will see another release candidate come out. We've got that, um, I think right now, we're focusing on the release candidates on really getting any, especially blocking issues. So um, I'll co-opt this to say that if you're working with the release candidates, please share your feedback. Um, you can get details in our blog post. There's a survey you could fill out. Uh, we're using that to really help us catch like anything that would really stop you from just upgrading to this one, 2019, when uh, 2022 is released. Now, as far as when the product releases, I don't have anything specific I can say right now, but generally after an RC, we try to be within a few months or so. So it's, it's, it's close right now, for sure. Mm -hmm. Here's a good question as, that's close to my heart. Extensions. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything new to share there, which is that we don't have an open extension marketplace with VS for Mac right now. Um, so I don't have anything more I can share on that at this point in time, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's something that I think we're definitely working on making <laughs> possible on the VS for Mac side, right? Yeah, oh, I'd love it. I mean, behind the scenes, the the whole IDE is, act, IDE is built up of a series of extensions. Um, so the, the core model is there, but we've got to 
you know, find the right time to also make sure we do right by documentation for it. So it's and samples and ways to and, and the IDE is stable enough and robust enough to handle as other extensions come in that we can guarantee that it's in a nice secure state for for users. That's and very important. We don't want to lose some of our gains of performance um, if we rush too fast and don't have the proper sort of sandbox in place. Some of the, the kinds of thoughts in my head. Very good question, though. I'd love to see us get more into extensions. Yeah, I would too. Be cool. And <laughs> to answer the question, I guess everything drops at build. Yeah, we can't say what will be dropping at build, but a lot of cool things will be dropping at build. So stay tuned for that. I'd give you the dates off the top of my head, but I unfortunately do not know them off the top of my head. It's like third week of May, I think. I think we've got 24th to 26th. Sounds right to me. I think right around there. Yeah, <laughs> like we, we pre-recorded um, several sessions last week. So that was the date I had in my head and uh, they'll air during build time, the VS related ones. So get excited for that. Yep. Uh, another question on any news on extensions for Mac. Yep, still in progress. It sounds like we don't have support for extensions BS for Mac yet. Right, yeah. There's a handful of authors like uh, Matthew Robbins with um, some of his Xamarin tools. Uh, I don't know why, Infractor, uh, that have been around for, you know, like Xamarin Studio days or been around for a while. So we're working with authors of the existing extensions to help you be able to get those up and running. Um, but as far as opening to new extensions and being ready, we're just, we're not there yet. Yeah. Well, I gotta ask, so for transparency sake, why hasn't there been extension support in like previous versions of VS for Mac? Yeah, part of that was while we were, well, a main thing was while we're focusing on the fundamentals of getting our performance in a good state, making some of these bigger architectural shifts were um, big reasons as well. And then some of it comes down to, I mean, yeah, like every engineering team, some of our own uh, capacity and what we can get on the backlog and where we can fit it to do extensions right. We've got to make sure we've got the right supporting, uh, you know, some some sample code to por point at it is my feeling and so, or some documentation to help you understand like the editor extensibility model. Um, those sorts of things all coming together. So beyond opening it up and say, oh, go ahead and figure out how to write an extension and, and then we'll, we'll let it in. And we've got to put a few things in place to help support that kind of an ecosystem as well as uh, protect like some of the fundamentals of the IDE, like in Visual Studio on Windows, you'll get notices about if an extension slowing down your environment. That can actually be really important as a you know, like a sandbox for the IDE to help you as a user stay in control of performance and help us as an engineering team make it clear to you where this thing is causing you performance issues versus a bug you should report to our team. Those are the kinds of thoughts that go through our head that we have to put in place to properly say, okay, extensions are here. That is fair. Got, um, yeah, more extension it's questions. So, yeah, some good feedback about needing something like Semantic Colorizer to have additional themes in uh, VS for Mac. Just totally yep. narrow, yeah, playing around. Point on. Yeah, and customization in general, kind of expanding on some of that would be really awesome. Yeah. And then the other question about, would our favorite extensions from Windows be compatible or they need to be rewritten for Mac? Yep, that's... Yeah, that's so if somebody Mac. were to... Uh, if we were to work with someone on and bring an extension from Windows today, there would be... Um, my raw thinking is there'd be a, anything UI related would need some work. There may be some things around like editor extensibility that behind the scenes, some of the same hooks are there, but the actual core programming model would need something different wrapping it all. And um, yeah, there, there'd be a a decent bit of effort for somebody to migrate it. I don't know how much, but there would be some kind of rewriting needed. Yeah, hopefully not too much, too much, but again, it's something that we still have to work out. Yeah. Sweet. So, no further oh, questions. Oh, there is one question up here about um, user secret support. I should see if there's a developer community issue somebody could vote on for that um 
this is a good tool for us. So in the product too, you can help us out by doing things like provide a suggestion. And let's make sure the right window is opening and I don't close our stream. And uh, I was already signed in here. I think I can do this up on the developer community. You could come up here and in the product, you could use like the help menu and choose provide a suggestion or report a problem. These are the best ways to help get some stuff on our backlog. Um, if I were to come out here and search for user secrets, then you'll see, um, that's a little funky, but if you look at the opened issues, this is the current state of things. So like manage user secrets for VS for Mac, you could come out here and add, um, add your vote to the item. And this is the one, like we'll keep an eye out. I deduplicate items. And so it may say something's closed, but we dedupe them all to the one, try to get them all to the one thing so we can get a hit count and help us to then get an idea like what are the top requests and work through them that way. So user secrets though, that's one. Um, Got a little bit of a spec already prepped for it. Now we're just seeing the right time to layer that in. That's when we hear a little bit of feedback on. And um, for those of you not familiar, the user secrets feature, and I think this is probably what you're referring to is a um, one like Visual Studio on Windows has that makes it easy with uh, like .NET projects. You can use user secrets to store things like a connection string in a, a location outside of your project file, say that won't get committed to Git. And in VS, there's a right-click gesture on the project to go to the secrets, and it handles creating the GUID for you, putting it into the project file with the right key, and then taking you to this magic user secrets file on disk and connecting those. That's the feature we're looking at is bring some, bringing that in. So it saves you those extra steps of knowing to go, you know, what GUID to grab or what pieces to change in your project file to link the two of them. Yep. Good stuff. Uh... Earlier on, we te you teased the Maui projects that were going to be supported for VS for Mac. So, and a good follow up question is Is Maui going to be fully working when VS for Mac drops? Yeah, so .NET Maui will not be uh, officially supported when this. So, uh, the uh, version is uh, version 17.0 is what will be the first release of. Visual Studio 2022 for Mac. So 17.0 won't have official support for .NET MAUI projects. Um, there is some level of tooling that's in there today in the release candidates where um, you could open a project and be able to do some work. Your my as the phrase goes, your mileage may vary. It may not work consistently. Um, it's still under development. Uh, there will be a preview shipping around the same time as GA for our next release, and that is going to have more official .NET MAUI tooling. Um, and so you'll start to see more kind of in a falling preview, but this initial 17.0 won't be very different from what you've seen in the release candidate today, where you can at least are capable of opening and editing the projects and doing a little bit of work with them. Cool. So, you know, since we're in preview mode still with this, and of course you're looking for user feedback from everybody who's trying it out and if you're not trying it out you should definitely try out vs for mac Go try uh, it out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's coming on the horizon in addition to like we already mentioned maui and and other things yeah, like that so very good question um dot net 7 preview support c sharp 11 dot net maui those are the top things you're going to see us talking about and then the uh Continuing the work we've started with this release by, th there's a few things like the to-do window in VS for Mac is not gonna be in 17.0 yet. There's some UIs that ended up, we had to draw a line that we didn't get fully ported. Usage numbers showed they were at a point that maybe they weren't as critical as some others. So you'll see us finishing that work of native UI with a few straggler UIs in that uh, next preview release. But then really a big, 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 big focus for us is what we say is dealing with the paper cuts aren't familiar with the phrase paper cuts can be like death by a thousand paper cuts one little nuance that by itself isn't so bad one little paper cut but they all if there's too many of those they add up and the idea is you're, you're going to die from too many cuts from all those paper cuts. so paper cuts suck <laughs> yeah so they can be i think it really hurt yeah um, it's just a little annoying so that's it. ruined part oh, of yeah. the day yeah, we don't want that so that's part of our goal too is to uh seek out and destroy those and so coming up with a list right now of some of those in 2022, but especially continuing like the work where we've addressed a lot of paper cuts with 2022 uh, because of the new UI work, it got rid of a lot of paper cuts in 2019 just by 
changing that foundational piece of the UI. So we're going to continue that work largely. And um, so we'll have more to share there later. I don't have the specific themes, but uh, the way I, I, I'm thinking in my head right now of working these is that we can come up with some specific themes of, you know, this release may be the paper cuts that are really annoying around window layout and positioning. And this release may be the ones that are really annoying around uh, fonts or keyboard shortcuts or something like that. So it's kind of the idea of what will go, but so specifics of which paper cuts um, up front for sure, it'll be anything there like regressions, issues we introduced in 2022 or, or things we broke for 2019 that we don't need to bring back in. That'll be kind of stuff that the next preview will focus on. Awesome. And yeah, I'm honestly just excited to see more similarities between VS for Mac and VS for Windows. Like I was starting to think VS for Mac was feeling a little um, neglected for lack of a better word, I guess. So like, it's great to see it getting the love that it deserves and um, yeah. popped up to be an equally powerful experience if you're a Mac user. Um, for yeah, we got a passionate team of engineers all excited to be moving from native UI now to, okay, now what can we do on top of this new, you know, base that we've got to work with? What are other things we can bring in? Um, yeah, the other example is stuff like there's the, uh, the Razor editor um, that's key to Blazor development or working with CSHTML files. There's a new Razor editor in Visual Studio 2022. Behind the scenes, it's enabled by technology called Language Server Protocol or LSP that was being introduced in VS on Windows. So VS Mac, that's one of those architectural things are also like, oh, let's see what we can do to bring that forward, which then brings in things like the new Razor editor, maybe some other editor features that are starting to light up, as we say, uh, because of that functionality. So those are other sorts of things we're looking at. Awesome. Well, looking good. So yeah, anything else that you want to share or speak to before we wrap up? Um. Other than Visual Studio for Mac 2022, please go try out the release candidate. We shared a link uh, in here to the blog post. If you go to visualstudio.com, you can see a link to this um, beautiful page that our design crew put together that summarizes these really big points of the release. So focus on being a fast and fluid release that's hand tailored native to the Mac and supporting .NET 6 development. Um, and from this page, you can get the jumping off point to give us your feedback. Uh, take a look at our roadmap. We'll get a new version of that out before too long and get some updates to that. Um, and then really try it, download the release, try it out. They got links in the blog to post to our survey. So any feedback I can get from folks would be huge. I'd love to hear from everybody. Yep. And uh, we talked about the, the dev community before already, but we read those. It's not a robot. <laughs> yeah. Reading those, um, the suggestions, it's, us and all of our other colleagues who go through and uh, make sure to tag the ones that might be feasible or, or very popular and to try to go from there. So your suggestions matter. Uh, other than that, yeah, feel free to, mm -hmm. and you also, you're supposed to- Oh, I just said, absolutely, I was with you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sweet, and uh, you also shared your Twitter. So reach out to Jordan if you have any questions on vs for mac and where it's going moving forward. Super exciting. And uh, also make sure to stay posted for Build 2022. We talked about that earlier, but there's sure to be some awesome announcements in the Visual Studio family space that you probably won't want to miss. It's May 24th through the 26th. So mark your calendars for that. And I just looked that up. I didn't remember it off the top of my head. And yeah, <laughs> and with that, thank you so much, Jordan, for, for being here. And I can't wait to do a check-in probably with you on what's new with VS for Mac as we get closer to like actual GA. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks for having me. It was nice chatting. Yeah. And thanks all. Yeah. Good to see yep. everybody. Thanks for all the questions. That's fun. It keeps it going. Yep. Thanks for all the awesome questions. And until next time, happy coding and may the fourth be with you. Take care all.